so you have these two opposing viewpoints. One of them is like, set these goals and go get them. And the other one is like, well, you're going to be unhappy if you set these goals. So what I think is cool about the Super Mario effect is it says it's not about the goal or the journey, regardless of whether you're focused on outcome or if you're focused on journey, how you process failure is what is going to define the quality of your experience. That's what we're talking about right now. And we are live, if I'm not mistaken, for another Cafecito with Noah session. Cheers. Today we're actually having Cafecito, real coffee. Let's see. We're doing a nitro brew with vanilla sweet cream. And I should get started on Instagram as well. This is Instagram right here for those of you on Twitch. Hello, hello. Hope everybody is having a fantastic Monday. Let's go ahead and do an audio check because we know my record with that. Yep, it's live. It is happening. Very nice. Welcome, Instagram. I got started with Twitch a moment ago, and we're here. Oh, hi, Sophie. First person to come say hello. How's your day going? So today is interesting. The vibe is chill. I've been in a bit of a heavy space all day, so it's especially uh, confrontational to my ego to try to go live in the middle of having a weird heavy day. The ego likes to say that, well, if you're, if you're not having the best day of your life, then what the hell are you doing going live? And I think that is a bar that is way too high. Um, you know, I'm me, and that's valuable any given day of the week in any emotional state. So here we are, and I want to share with you guys, you know, and at the end of the day, all of that egoic thinking just keeps me alone in a room, not sharing with anyone. Um, so here we are, despite all of that. Funny enough, I had a nice jolt of energy today. I dropped off a bunch of stuff at Goodwill, did some Marie Kondoing like two days ago. So many ironic things, so much life happening all at once right now. I've been working on this space. It's a studio space. It's an office space. I've been working on it for about a year now, getting it just beautiful. And it's there, you know, it's there. It, we made it. And this recent Goodwill um, drop, I uh, finally got rid of a bunch of clutter. So we've arrived just in time to potentially not even continue to live at this place. So that is ironic. That is, in, that is wild. It is incredible to walk this like long journey to get to this place where everything is like so organized and gorgeous and wonderful, only to basically have to say goodbye to it. I brought this up in therapy. I think it was like last week. And my therapist had something absolutely incredible to share with me. He this is what this is. I always tell him this is why he gets paid the big, big bucks. You know, he made this connection and he made a connection to the uh, to the sort of sand mandalas that the monks do. I don't know exactly which faction of monks do it, but there is a faction of monks and they get the little colored sand and they sit outside or wherever it is that they're doing this at a temple and they make an artistic, beautiful mandala on the ground. And it takes them takes them a while. I mean, it takes them at, I think it's a few days, maybe even a week, maybe even a few weeks. I'm not sure how long it takes. It depends on how intricate and how large the piece is. But by the end of it, they destroy it. So they finish this huge thing and then they just, you know, wipe the sand all over the place. And it's remarkable because it really is embodying non-attachment and embodying that sort of releasing and really acknowledging the impermanence of life and uh, and all of these things that we create and sort of an homage to the fact that the one thing you can count on is change. But anyway, when you put it in the context of those guys, you know, doing their mandalas and wiping away the sand, I was just like, Ugh, yeah, all right. If they can do that, then, you know, I can find joy in making the office beautiful just for the sake of making it beautiful, even if I have to wipe it away and move it, you know, sooner than I expected or ever wanted. But yeah, so 
that's uh, one of the nuggets for this week for me. That's kind of coming up, things I'm going through, things I'm thinking about. What are some other things? If you guys have any nuggets, things you're going through, things you're thinking about, I would love to start a dialogue. Cafecito with Noah really is supposed to be something of a dialogue. But insofar as I'm hanging out here by myself right now, I'm going to keep on riffing. So about riffing and about hanging out by myself, I've got my podcast, God Mode, A Player's Guide to Life. God Mode, A Player's Guide to Life is a jam. I put my friends on there. We talk about things. It's a great time. Also gives me a uh, mine, if you will, like something for mining, right? Like a, like a reservoir, a trove to go to and get cool content and um, share that again, back to this concept of sharing. But there's a lot that goes on around it. I, you know, got to book people. They got to come here. Um, I spend an hour talking to them, get them on camera, set up the microphones. Then I get to process all the audio, color correct the footage, cut the footage, make an intro VO, splice it together, post that thing to the internet, and then go through, find the clips, edit the clips, edit them horizontal, edit them vertical, uh, post the clips. So it's a whole process, right? So I've been thinking, what if there was like another offering, which was Something like Cafecito with Noah, except not so long form. Hi, Yaras. Thank you for saying hi on Twitch. What was I saying? Oh, so it's not going to be so long form. It might be a, a bit more short form, kind of like a YouTube video style talking head thing. But the idea that I would just come on and sort of be a podcast of one. Um, I've only heard of one example of this in the past. I don't know many other ones. But she apparently does quite well, and she has listeners. Um, and that would be neat, because I am definitely the unending resource in my own life. And uh, you know, I'm already thinking about a million things every day, so what if I just put them on the internet and kind of made the audience, aka you guys, the participant, right? Like the audience becomes the guest of the podcast. So that's something, that's an interesting idea I've had. and. In a sort of expression of that idea, we can kind of mess around with it right now. So what happens? This week, obviously, like every week, there's current events, things that come up. Maybe I see a meme or something on social media, that kind of thing. Let's send some waves. I hope maybe that makes, that's like nice. Look, everybody got waved at. Anyways, current events, right? So right now, I think AI art generation is popping off. They've got the chat GPT. Gosh, the freaking Instagram limit. There we go. Instagram limit hits me again, but we're back. Um, so we got AI art popping off. We got the chat G D P whatever the hell it's called. GPT. Let me see. I'm gonna look it up. GPT. Yep. Open AI chat GPT. So it's very funny because my buddy like Hunter and I have been following this for a while. There's like a whole Reddit where AI chatbots have been commenting. So one AI chatbot will post a main post on the Reddit. And then all of the other chat bots, actually, sometimes it's the same exact bot, right? But they'll post comments. And so, and a lot of times this can be very funny. But one of the big things that's happened like in the last week or so that's like kind of come into vogue or like stepped into center stage is people are like getting answers to tests now. They're getting scripts to YouTube videos. Um, they can get the AI to write them a rap song. Pretty wild. To be honest, I haven't fully dove into that yet, the writing part of the AI situation. I've been more playing with the uh, digital art side. You know, um, I've been playing with Mid Journey. I played with Mid Journey about a month ago for a few weeks. I've been using Hunter's Stable Diffusion app. Nick says Skynet is here. Yeah, Skynet is here. Hopefully, uh, you know, man, at the end of the like, God, I don't know. Maybe I've just been pessimistic lately, but. At this point in humanity's trajectory, AI might be more compassionate towards humans than humans are towards humans. So, I mean, at this point, I'm like, man, maybe AI is going to help us out. You know, I just it's like, God damn, we could use some support. On that note, um, I was we've been watching I've been watching a uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion again for like the third time. They have the Magi system, right? The three supercomputers that crunch numbers, predict the future, essentially, 
and then vote on how they should proceed. And it's pretty interesting, you know, because we just got, I mean, what this was, when was, let's see, when Neon Genesis Evangelion was released. The release date was 1995, right? And, and one of the things they said in the recent episode is how the government in Ava is just a uh, sort of like puppet government and they're just doing what these computers say. Pretty interesting. You combine that with the Skynet concept, you combine that with this idea that maybe the computer would be more compassionate than humans. And who knows? I mean, definitely challenges the idea of free will if, if everybody just blindly follows what a bunch of computers say. So not necessarily an obvious aspiration in that regard, but maybe some sort of cooperation is useful. We'll see. So yeah, AI chats, AI art, those are big, those have been big things this week. And generally I find that like, I have like something to say about the media that I consume in general. So for example, it's so, it's something like a reaction video and maybe I'm not, I have to figure out sort of like the form of how I could create this content for the world and for you guys. But it's kind of like a reaction video. For example, this week I saw Colin and Samir. Colin and Samir is a super cool YouTube channel and it's centered around interviewing creators on a podcast, seeing what's working for them, what sort of systems they have in place, how they're viewing the creator economy, et cetera, et cetera. And I caught a video this week while I was messing around with some AI art generation. And the video that I watched was about Mark Rober. He's an engineer. He used to work at NASA. He has worked at Apple. I don't think he works at Apple anymore. And he makes these awesome videos on the internet that are very fun. He's always engineering some crazy shit. I actually took his engineering course online about a year and a half ago. It was really fun. So I was watching this Colin and Samir video about Mark Rober. And in it, Mark talks about the Super Mario effect. He calls it the Super Mario effect. And I'll share it here because this is the kind of thing I'm talking about, right? Like, I heard this and I had an original sort of like, oh, Noah, like I have a personal response to this. How can I share that with people? Here I am. I'm sharing it in Cafecito with Noah. This is the form it's taking. So the Super Mario effect is basically, Mark points out how when we play Super Mario Bros and we're like jumping through level one or whatever, there's like those holes. And if you've like missed the jump, then you just die. It's like boop, boop. And you start over again. Da, 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 da. Hopefully that wasn't as bad. I have had the headphones on, whatever. So anyway, you know, uh, da, 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 and you start over again. So what he's talking about is when we die in Super Mario Bros, we don't say to ourselves like, oh, I'm putting down the remote and I'm never playing this game again. We don't do that. We are like, oh, I ran too slowly and I hit this gap. I'm going to run faster next time. I'm going to jump later next time. And then we run a little bit faster. We jump a little bit later. We make it past the gap and we keep going. Well, he ran an experiment with his followers where essentially they were given a puzzle to solve and it was an A-B test. So half of the followers were given this puzzle and there were no points involved. And the other half of his followers were given a puzzle and there were points involved. And the points were completely arbitrary. They didn't buy you anything. It was just like points, completely arbitrary, vacuous points. For the B people, he would take away five points every time they lost, but he would give them like 10 or 15 or 20 or whatever every time they won. For the A people, he would, there were no points at all. They just played the game just to play the game. And I actually have a piece of content about infinite games, playing the game to play the game, right? Anyway, it's cool how that's going to overlap right now. Because what ended up happening was the people who got the minus points would quit playing the game sooner because they would not, the way that they were conceptualizing failure was that they were not only failing, but they they were losing something every time that they failed. Whereas the people who just played the game for the game's sake didn't have this perception that they were losing resources. And so they continued to invest and they just kept trying to problem solve the game. And they were twice as good at playing the game as the other people who were getting points taken off. The Super Mario effect. I thought this was really neat and interesting because... I mean, in my own life a million times, no doubt about it, you know, when, when it feels like, I mean, even in school specifically, right? School was brutal with this, 
But when you feel you're getting these points off, you don't want to keep chumping over the gap because it feels like you're bleeding, you know, like you're just bleeding these resources. But at the end of the day, what Mark points out is it's really arbitrary and it's all happening in our head. Like we're the ones who give it the meaning. It's not like there were no real points, like there was nothing lost. And I guess in life, what we're trading constantly is time. And it's ironic because by participating in this idea that I'm losing points, knowing that on a psychological level, it's going to get in the way of me ultimately learning, which theoretically the idea is I could learn anything. Um, I'm actually losing time, more time by engaging in the point system because I'm ejecting from the learning process. Whereas even if it took me a little while longer to learn something, maybe I'm struggling, so I'm experiencing failure often, but I'm not conceptualizing failure as um, terminal or a, a waste of resources, then I'm just going to keep attacking the problem and I'm actually going to get better at it and I'm actually going to learn, which means I'm going to end up spending more time in my life having acquired the thing that I sought to acquire in the first place. And in that regard, even though you might spend more time jumping over the gap and you might spend more time failing, it's, you're, not losing, you're, you're not losing time. Losing time, in my opinion, if you really pause and think about it, happens when you basically quit early and then are now spending hours of your life having not integrated the thing that you went to go after and to integrate. So if that's learning, um, if that's in achieving some sort of goal or whatever it is, um, you're, 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 now you're losing time if you have stopped playing, if you've stopped jumping the gap. You're just fo so Sarai says, you're just focused on the journey and learning when you're not constantly being affected by an expectation of an outcome. That is an interesting statement. Let's see this slowly now. Well, you know what's kind of fucking cool about this whole Super Mario effect is because I've heard this thing about, you know, there's like the whole internet and oh, the whole self-help community seems to be split in half around outcomes and results and shit like this. You know, half of everything we learn is about don't be attached. You know, that allows you to like follow the cheese when the cheese moves. It allows you to be agile and it also connects you to happiness. You know, I've heard that you know, a goal is a contract you set with yourself to be unhappy until a certain date when a certain condition is met. I think that's funny. So, so you have these two opposing viewpoints. One of them is like, set these goals and go get them. And the other one is like, well, you're going to be unhappy if you set these goals. So what I think is cool about the Super Mario effect is it says it's not about the goal or the journey. I mean, I guess ultimately it becomes about the journey, but the people who play Super Mario, their goal is to beat the game. Like their goal is to get over that gap, you know, and they're very focused on it. Like even me, as an example, like I was very focused on like beating that level. It has to do with this points thing and it has to do with failure. It's almost like as if the whole Super Mario effect concept is saying, regardless of what your goal is and regardless of whether you're focusing on outcome or you're focusing on journey, regardless how you process failure is going to determine how you're progressing and, and also maybe even color your general experience of either. So maybe it's saying how you process failure is going to determine if you're enjoying the journey, how you process failure is going to determine if you arrive at the outcome, which I imagine you would enjoy it once you arrived at the outcome. And how you process failure could also make the journey extremely painful and not enjoyable, at which point you'll eject likely from the journey and never arrive at the outcome. It's a whole trip. What's up? Like the do. How's it going, bro? Let me, uh, I, I can barely see you guys on the uh, Instagram chat, so I've got to whip this up. I've got my computer open. There it is. Dwight. I thought it was Dwight. How's it going, brother? Here I have a wave. Hi, Tosh. Thank you so much for jumping in and peeking. Hello, hello. Hope you're doing well. I think about you all the time, Tosh. Like, for real. I've been uh, doing a whole workout program and trying to get myself into great shape. 
And I'm always like, dude, I got to catch up to Tosh. Got to catch up to Tosh. Never forgot. How's it going? How am I? I'm doing great. I've got my cafecito here. So if you've got a little coffee, cheers to you. Cheers to Tosh. Cheers to everybody in here right now. This is my Monday. It's usually like a 30 minute to an hour long stream. And uh, we just chat. We're chatting about life. I like to start a dialogue, my guy. So if you're hanging around for a minute, please tell me how your week is going. Tell me what's on your mind. What are some, you know, what's like a post that's popped up in your life lately that got your attention, maybe you had something to say about it, what we were just talking about, if I could do a quick you know, recap for you, something called the Super Mario Effect. And what we boiled it down to is, regardless of whether you're focused on an outcome, which is like generally regarded as like a way to propagate suffering, but regardless of whether you're focused on outcome or if you're focused on journey, at least this is where I'm at right now with it, how you process failure is what is going to define the quality of your experience. That's what we're talking about right now. And just so you know, when you're in an environment where it seems that you're leaking resources per failure, uh, human psychology suggests that you are less likely to continue engaging with failure, which ironically, engaging with failure is ultimately what leads to competence and success. So you need to be able to continue engaging with failure. So which means we got to rethink the way uh, we're managing resources and and just be really conscious. I mean, we can't always determine the arena that we're in. And sometimes other people set the rules. And for, you know, that I think school is a perfect example of that. Like, at least for now, you know, I, 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 I didn't get out of it. I know there's a, a millions of people currently in it. And we're, we've just proved, basically, um, that losing points impedes progress. And yet school is completely based on that. So tough, tough little piece of information there. Uh, what am I saying? Oh, right. If you're in the arena, you can't choose the arena. So it's up to us then to be aware of this and make a sort of conversion in our minds. So if I was in school right now, for example, I would have to be very conscious of reinterpreting the point loss as something other than a point and loss. I mean, it's, you know, it's definitely extra steps. Um, but yeah. So that was the Super Mario effect. You know, me doing a little blurb on it. It's kind of like a potential, another form of content for me. Yep, school taught you that failure equals embarrassment. Uh-huh, I get that. Brutal, man. Brutal. You know, it's funny when we went to MITT, Dylan, Dylan uh, is big on education and it's kind of like his whole mission uh, to be involved in the educational institution and to uh, upgrade it, basically. And we really connected on that front because I, too, would like to help education in some way. For me, it's a bit more abstract, I guess. Personally, I think it would also be neat for me to explore some online educational opportunities. Like I enjoy watching Veritasium, which is a fantastic YouTube channel, and they're always plugging this like company called Brilliant. And apparently Brilliant has like these awesome modules on the internet where you can learn things like economics, statistics, um, physics, stuff like that. And they have these like little like interactive lab sort of like games that you can play. Um, and I and I and I'm under the impression that these websites are implementing these best practices in terms of like encouraging students to learn rather than making that process more difficult than it needs to be. I just felt the other aid of that, the, the other side of that this weekend. I finally did ropes. Dude, please tell me about that. What do you mean? The other side of that. You, you felt the accomplishment side. I don't want to put words in your mouth. So please clarify. Which side did you feel? Also, was it cold? It feels like it must have been really freaking cold. You experienced the other side, but which side? Which side were you on and which side did you go to? By the way, for everybody on Twitch, I'm, in, I'm interacting with my Instagram following right now. We don't have the Twitch chat is actually really quiet. Oh, it was warm. Well, would you look at that? That's nice. Wow. Yeah, actually, I saw an awesome Russell Brand and um, Jordan Peterson 
uh, video this week too. So yeah, Drew, um, Dwight is saying that he would normally have failure be a heavy weight to him and feel shame or, or actually shame himself for it. Dot, dot, dot. He is typing. Rebecca, welcome to the stream, Rebecca. Hello, hello. We're talking about how we process failure. What is Taoism? We have a wonderful question that just popped up in Twitch. Man, Taoism is, if I'm not mistaken, one of the three ancient Chinese philosophies. The other two, or I guess they, they're considered Eastern philosophies. In my estimation, the, the three of them are Taoism, Buddhism, and Taoism, Buddhism, and Confucianism. So that is what Taoism is. It's phenomenal. Man, we can get into it. Let me know if you have any other questions. Doing the leap of faith. I didn't reach the appointed goal, but the accomplishment for me was that I jumped. Yes, dude. I'm not sure if anybody's ever done a ropes course, but it's a challenge. It's a challenge and a half. And it's definitely, a, it's so mental. It's incredibly, it's incredible how mental it is. I mean, it's certainly a physical challenge too. It just really, when you're, when you're thinking about it the right way, a ropes course is so powerful in terms of representing everyday challenges in a visceral, visceral way. You know, um, it really facilitates an incredible amount of presence. Mm, yes, Dwight. So Dwight's, so Dwight's saying, basically, he's at this ropes course. He has a goal. He wants to achieve it, right? He wants to like beat the feature, whatever the feature is at the course. Um, sometimes it's like a jump or sometimes it's like you're walking, you know, balancing on a balance beam, things like that. So he has the goal to beat the feature. Um, but in this case, he did not completely beat the feature, but you know, he didn't, he like, he attempted and he even jumped, right? Which is like one of the scariest aspects of the thing. And what he did do during his session there was he learned to be in relationship with, in, a, in a healthy way without shame with the gap, the gap between where he is and the goal, right? So basically, oh, I, I, it's so Super Mario, actually. He took the jump. He fell into the gap, literally. And instead of processing it as like shameful failure, he's in a space now where he's like, okay, cool. This is where I'm at. And what's next? That's useful. That keeps you in motion. Diz, I'm, I'm curious if you have any other questions about Taoism. For everybody else in the chat, um, I want to say something about Taoism just to clarify it a little bit and make it a bit more distinct. You know, I just gave you sort of the overall, this is the category it fits in. But, you know, there's this awesome painting and it's called The Vinegar Tasters. And The Vinegar Tasters does a great job of sort of setting Taoism apart from the other traditions, which is you have three people and they're each the head of a different tradition. One of them is Confucianism. The other one is Buddhism and the other one is Taoism. And they're each sipping, uh, they're taking a spoonful of vinegar out of a bowl. And this is like a, it's a, well, it's almost like a sketch. It's a painting, right? So they each take a sip and the, it, the way they react to the vinegar is supposed to be emblematic of the philosophy. So for Confucianism or Confucianism, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that. They, their, uh, the approach through that philosophy is very rules-based and structure-based. And so there's a lot of judgment towards the vinegar, which is to say it's, it is uh, sharp and intense a flavor, right? And so that that person's face when he tastes the vinegar scrunches up and he's kind of like mm, bracing right and then for the buddhist they sip it and for them um you know again being in the body and you know suffering in general etc life is suffering blah blah, blah. so they're tasting it mm, again intense intense feeling well in the taoist tradition the idea is that life is just life and that the vinegar is just vinegar and that um, when we sort of allow the experience, then we don't, and we don't brace ourselves. We're not like, mm, about it. We can just experience it as it is. And so the, the Taoist is tasting the vinegar and they're just kind of like smiling, right? And the idea there, that just, it shows everybody's sort of relationship in terms of the greater philosophy. 
So I guess Taoism is a lot about allowing and being with the flow, um, with the force, you know, if you will, a little bit from like Star Wars there. Hello, hello. All right, guys. Well, thank you all for tuning in. Dwight and anyone else who's here, if you haven't seen the podcast yet or you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, I'd really appreciate it if you go check it out. I think you might like it. My YouTube channel is Noah Talon 44 The podcast is called God Mode, A Player's Guide to Life. Let's do a little test real quick. If I go incognito mode and I type in God Mode, A Player's Guide to Life, Boom, it exists. It's here. Awesome. So yeah, if you type in God Mode, a player's guide to life, it, it will come up. You can see episode one is here. There's the trailer. But yes, it's at the YouTube channel is Noah Talon 44. You can go check it out. Please subscribe so you can get updates. Obviously, the people on Instagram are already following me on Instagram. If you're on Twitch, my Instagram is Noah.talon. You can get a bunch of the short form content on Instagram that way. But yeah, I'm getting into this habit of not talking about things that I haven't done yet. So I'm not even going to talk about the thing I haven't done yet. I'm going to do it and then I'll talk about it once it's done. But there's, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. Uh, yeah. So there it is. We're just going to leave it at that. It's a bit of a cliffhanger. It's a mystery. So I guess you'll just have to stay tuned to see when uh, I flip from, oh, I'm not talking about this thing to I'm talking about this thing. And then voila, big reveal. Somewhere in the creator verse, I'm, I'm feeling like, oh, I just did a cool thing. You know, I just created a hook. I, I hooked my audience. They're going to be waiting for this big reveal. We'll have to see. So, man, that was a great cafecito, guys. Today, oh, let's see right here. Yaras says, Leap of Faith is so incredible. The breakthroughs you can have are endless. Dude, as a matter of fact... If you guys go to my second episode of the podcast behind me, as I sit on the bed doing the podcast episode, is the photograph of me doing the leap of faith. So that's a fun fact for anybody who's curious and interested. I'm, I'm watching my little clip of it on my Instagram right now. And right now it's really focused on Michelle. If we can jump it over, then... There it is. So the second it jumps over, you can see me right there in the background holding onto the leap of faith. So that's pretty funny. I love that it's actually like front and center. Thank you so much for tuning in today, guys. Very nice chatting with everybody. I hope you guys have a great week. I hope that some of these ideas you all think about throughout the week, specifically the Super Mario effect. Next week, we'll be back again on Monday with another cafecito with Noah. And maybe you guys can tell me how it went, you know, and how the Super Mario effect principle applied throughout the week um diz if you discover anything else about taoism uh for anybody else interested in taoism one of my favorite books on it is taoism made easy let me see if i can get you guys the author for that oh no it's called the Tao. the Tao made easy the book is by alan cohen and then another fun book about the Tao is the Tao of Pooh. and this is a this is the teaching of the Tao through winnie the Pooh as a sort of metaphor anyway thank you guys so much for tuning in oh, this has been another session of cafecito with noah i'm gonna wave at our new viewers here on instagram love you guys thank you so much and i hope you guys have a great week hasta luego